Additionally, the city attorney is currently out. And uh, gracing us with monitoring over the course of our meeting this evening is Mr. Sky Woodruff from Myers Nave, and he is also called in on our phones. So I'd like to welcome uh, Mr. Woodruff, and uh, welcome you too, Mayor. Thanks, Mayor. Right, You're welcome. Um, so let's get started. There's not many fun things we get to do, but this is definitely one of them. I had the, the opportunity this evening to uh, recognize our employee of the month, and I'd like to call Nadine Silva forward. How are you, Nadine? Good, hey, welcome. This is the information. I don't know how accurate it is. I think it is, but, oh, well, yeah. Nadine is an accountant, too, with the Administration and City Finance Department. And this is a little bit of the background about Nadine. Nadine Silva has been named the City of Turlock Employee of the Month for August 2017. Nadine was nominated for her great customer service to both external and internal customers. As an accountant, she knows the importance of detail and transparency, and her work is a reflection of just that. Nadine always goes the extra mile in everything that she does. She will put aside her own work to assist others and is still able to finish her responsibilities timely and efficiently. I understand you're going to be holding a seminar on how to do that later. Nadine is a great teacher and always helps her coworkers with a smile on her face. Nadine earned her BA from California State University Stanislaus while working full time. She was hired in 1998 as an account clerk. In 2000, she was promoted to Accountant 1 and then to Accountant 2 in 2007, right? Good. Personal hobbies, Nadine is proud mother of two daughters, Marissa and Megan, and is happily and busily involved in their activities. So with that background, this certificate as the Employee of the Month for August 2017. May it be known that this certificate is awarded to Nadine Silva. We hereby express our sincere appreciation for your outstanding employment, performance, productivity, and commitment to the city of Turlock. Your dedication and hard work have been recognized by your peers. Therefore, you are awarded this Employee of the Month certificate for August 2017. On behalf of the entire city council and fellow co-workers, May I extend our recognition and sincere appreciation for your dedicated service. In witness whereof, Gary Soyset, the mayor of the city of Turlock, has set his hand and caused the seal of the city of Turlock to be affixed this 12th day of September, 2017. Gary Soyset, mayor, myself, on behalf of the balance of the council. Congratulations, Nadine. She's got a 20-minute speech prepared, so... Yeah, I'll try to make it short. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank everyone, Vice Mayor, Council, City staff for being here. Um, it's truly an honor to be nominated and uh, selected as the Employee of the Month. We have so many amazing people that work at the city that I think any of them should have been up here. But I'm sure some have and some will be. Um, I um, want to thank uh, Julie and Kelly. They've been a great support and encouragement to me and helping me to continually grow in my position with the city. Um, I also work with an amazing group of people. My coworkers are supportive and we back each other up and I could not ask to be on a better team. Um, along with my coworkers, everyone in all the departments, uh, I can always count on them. We work great together, and I truly feel blessed for having such a great group of people to work with. Um, as Vice Mayor here said, I've been here almost 20 years, and I feel privileged and honored to have the opportunity to be at the City of Turlock. I look forward to many more years here um, to work with uh, all of you. 
And he did talk about my daughters. I do have two amazing daughters, Marissa and Megan, and they do uh, encourage me to strive to do my best every day at home and at work. So I'd like to thank everyone. Okay, now where's the official photographer? We uh, see if we got one of these. Okay, good. Thank you very much. I, you, oh yeah, I thought somebody did. I thought somebody did. Yes. Oh wait, how's my hair? <laughs> Don't worry, you cut off your head. Gotcha. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And for our next presentation this evening, I'm going to call up uh, Chief Adam Farr. Chief? Thank you, Vice Mayor. Please don't, don't leave, Vice Mayor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Vice Mayor, Council Members, and uh, Mayor Soisa, uh, thank you for uh, this opportunity to uh, recognize uh, one of our police officers and uh, several of our citizens, uh, namely, is Mr. Mendoza here today, tonight? Was he able to make it? No, great. Well, thank you, Council, for uh, allowing this time of recognition. As most of you know, on the evening of June 4th, uh, around midnight, there was a terrible accident on the off-ramp of Lander Avenue at 99, where an individual, uh, a 19-year-old young man, uh, suffered a medical emergency and went off the roadway um, and uh, his accident created a huge fire. Officer Adam Neep uh, self-dispatched to that call, and what that means is, is he wasn't sent because it's the freeway and it's usually a CHP, but he heard the call and he heard our fire department responding uh, their rescue efforts and he responded. Uh, meantime, a citizen, uh, Mr. Jose Mendoza, who is not here, uh, stopped along with several other citizens on the off-ramp side of the freeway where you see the chain link fence and they saw that the vehicle uh, was turned over, there was a fire, and they saw an individual struggling. Uh, Mr. Mendoza, who himself was uh, suffering from health issues, was able to uh, get over the fence with the help of other citizens that were there and uh, was able to pull the individual from that burning wreckage and the field that was on fire around him. However, the uh, gentleman had suffered a medical condition uh, and after he was recovering from that medical condition, he began to uh, resist Mr. Mendoza's attempts to save him, uh, which caused him to fall to the ground, and then the gentleman ran back into the fire. Um, Mr. Mendoza thought the gentleman had passed away, and uh, he was distraught over it. However, the gentleman had not. Officer Neep had arrived on the other side of the freeway, and with two other citizens who are also not here, uh, Moses Garcia and Christian Flores, uh, were immediately rendered aid to the gentleman who was in the fire trying to walk away, still uh, disorientated. So Officer Neep ran into the fire, uh, grabbed the individual, was having difficulty, and the two additional citizens ran and helped him, and Mr. Mendoza was pulled to freedom. Uh, the police department recognized Officer Neep with the Medal of Meritorious Service, and we also recognized um, Mr. Jose Mendoza, a citizen, uh, certificate of Valor. Uh, tonight, uh, Council is also recognizing uh, their heroic efforts. Officer Neep, will you come forward, please? <laughs> Officer Neep received Turlock Police Department's um, Medal of Meritorious Service. Uh, he put his life uh, on the line and without hesitation um, saved the citizen with the, with the help of additional citizens. He was awarded this medal, as I stated, in August, and tonight the council is recognizing him. Um, Mayor Soises honored the police department by placing this ribbon on the previous recipient of the same medal, and in, in that tradition I asked the vice mayor to do the same. You put it back in there pretty good, didn't you? <laughs> oh, 
Pastor, if you'll turn and face your community. Next to you, would you like to say a few words? <laughs> <laughs> Officer Neep is a man of few words, but uh, mighty action. Thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. There you are. Uh, we now have a uh, special presentation by uh, Morgan Andre. Welcome, Morgan. Hi. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Good evening, um, Mayor Soyfe, CFM, and City Council. Uh, my name is Morgan Andre, um, and I'm the artist responsible for the work that's currently on display in the lobby just outside. Um, I was asked by the Arts Commission to come speak uh, and give a brief description of the series and what it's all about. So um, this series is titled Abstract Landscapes. Uh, there are exactly 22 paintings in this exhibition, and they're all acrylic on canvas or acrylic and mixed media on canvas. Um, this body of work has been very inspired by themes of direction, navigation, um, in the physical sense as well as the mental sense. Um, and I've explored these ideas through the use of things like paint layers, well, through paint layers, um, and textures that imply things like sediment, levels of understanding, parameters, and masses of land. Um, you may notice that the works contain the use, or line use, that suggests things like maps, topographic maps, um, trails or patterns, and overall have a lot of movement. Uh, and much of the series has been very much inspired by our geographical location here in the Central Valley. Um, and I, I like how that can serve as a symbol for many natural systems and, and phenomena that we experience. Um, the artist statement that's at the beginning of the show on that wall, um, you may have noticed is rather unconventional compared to um, a normal artist statement. It consists only of a, a running list of nouns, adjectives, and verbs. Um, and those were all things that I was thinking about during the production of these works as well as spending time with them after. Um, and I did that in efforts to kind of create, give viewers um, just a suggestion or just a, a little bit of um, a direction and, and enable the search of their own because that's what this whole series has kind of been for me. Um, but that, in essence, is what the entire series is about. Um, and if anyone has any questions or would like to discuss it further, please let me know. I'd love to do that. Um, but additionally, I just wanted to say thank you so much to Mayor Soises, everyone on the council, um, on the Arts Commission, and especially Eric Schultz and Parks and Rec for making this happen and allowing me this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Um, and also, um, as a local artist, it means so much that you guys invest your time and allow opportunities like this for the arts in Turlock. So thank you very much. Let's and before you leave, yes. go ahead. <laughs> And before you leave, thank you for the gift. Uh, if any of you have not taken the opportunity to review uh, these wonderful pieces on the walls in the hall outside, spend a couple of moments to do so. A couple of hours, until we close anyway. Uh, it's absolutely wonderful. Morgan, you've captured a lot there, and I think it's well worth our time to, to visit and to spend and invest our time. Thank you again so much. Thank you. Okay, this evening we do have a special briefing on the Turlock Regional Aviation Association. Mr. Todd Smith, who is the president. Welcome, Todd. Thank you, uh, Mayor Soyseth and uh, Vice uh, Mayor DeHart. Uh, again, my name is Todd Smith. I'm the president of the uh, Turlock Regional Aviation Association. And we are under a uh, management agreement with the city of Turlock to manage the uh, 
city, city's municipal airport out on East Avenue. Um, this is a series of quarterly reports that uh, I'll be giving uh, for the near future, uh, just to give the council an update on where we're at, activities, uh, public events that have occurred. Um, having said that, uh, this past Saturday, uh, we had our annual Young Eagles event. And for those of you that are not familiar with that, this is uh, sponsored by the EAA Association. Um, and I believe it was started by Chuck Yeager, uh, who was part of the EAA organization exposing children around the country to uh, flight. Um, this year, they marked the two millionth flight of uh, a child, uh, which we were just a small part of that. This past Saturday, we flew 102 children from about 8.30 to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And it's, uh, if you've never been out there and seen these kids, it's an amazing uh, experience. Uh, the thing that was really uh, exciting to me is that <clears throat> we had promoted that we encourage uh, handicapped children to come out because a lot of people would think that you know they wouldn't have access to an aircraft. And we were able to make that happen. And we had a number of them that came out. And uh, it was quite an experience for the whole family you know, to see a child go up. So that was great. Uh, we're planning for next year. Um, and I would like to acknowledge uh, Allison and uh, Parks and Rec for their participation. Um, starting three years ago, uh, they started taking an extremely active role and uh, providing um, an area for children, children that couldn't fly, but siblings that were there to keep them occupied. So they've, they've ramped their game up every year, and it, it shows. Um, on the business perspective, uh, I can come tonight and tell you that we do not have any hangars available. Every single one of our hangars is now rented, and we actually have a waiting list. And I think that was uh, uh, caused by a recent dramatic increase at the Modesto Airport. It was went 150, 200 percent increase on rents. Very, very dramatic. Um, a lot of pressure from Merced and Castle. Castle is very uh, non-conducive for small aircraft, as you can imagine. Uh, so Turlock all of a sudden just becomes this raw gem among all of them, and we're seeing the results of that. So uh, there's going to be pressure for us, city, us particularly, to uh, get some hangars developed out there, which is exciting. Um, other than that, uh, we continue to explore other revenue sources at the airport. As reported before, we have some farming operations on the airport that is allowed for non-aviation related use per the FAA's approval, and that's proving to be uh, extremely beneficial for both parties. So we'll continue to look for those, those uh, opportunities. Um, Lastly, as the council is aware, we were uh, in a process of applying for some FAA grant money for some capital improvements uh, at the airport, which Allison uh, was right in the middle of. And what I'd like to do at this time is just defer to her and have her give you an update on that. Thank you very much. Thanks, Doug. Good evening, Mayor and Council and Vice Mayor. Um, as Mr. Smith alluded to, um, as you know, we were in a process with the FAA regarding our runway construction project. And um, bid process took place. We received uh, the bids back. And unfortunately, our low bid came in much, much higher than we had anticipated. Um, as a result, we were going to need to basically come back to this body um, to seek direction on how to proceed. Unfortunately, we ran into a time constraint with the FAA's deadlines, and so um, between us receiving the low bid numbers and um, strategizing on how to come back to council and when to be able to come back to council, council deadlines, or excuse me, council dates and the FAA deadlines simply just did not match up. Um, as, as a result of that, um, we were um, we missed out on that, that particular funding opportunity for this particular fiscal year. However, uh, we are in discussions this week on reprogramming the project for the future. 
Um, part of this discussion, though, um, we've learned a lot through this particular process, and so we really want to have a more engaged conversation with council through an airport workshop. Uh, we're working to schedule that for sometime after the first of the year so that we can um, have some dialogue about um, this particular project as well as future projects. So with that, um, I'd be happy to answer any questions, or Todd's here as well. Any questions? I do have one. Uh, you talked about loss of funding during this fiscal year. Is that federal fiscal or city fiscal? It's federal fiscal year, and that's the problem because their fiscal year ends at the end of September, and so they were having to have everything kind of wrapped up and programmed, and because we weren't going to be able to come back until essentially this meeting, um, they weren't comfortable with, with the delay, and so they chose to move forward um, without us at this particular point. But um, we're not out of the running. We just it's just a delay. Um, so we're, again, we're trying to figure out the best strategy of when to reprogram the project. And I guess the concern is whether that's fiscal 2018 or fiscal 2019. So that's what I was trying to pin down. Yes, and, that's, and they will basically tell us when, when the funding will be available. Thank you. Thank you very much, Todd. Really appreciate your report. Okay, time for staff updates. Uh, policy goals implementation plan. Who's, who leads us off this evening? Do we have anybody that's going to volunteer to lead us off this evening? Okay, how we start off with administrative services? Have we got a report there? Well, what kinds of folks missing this evening? How about developmental services like Pitcock? Good evening. On, your, on the building uh, activities for the month of August, we had 88 per, uh, 155 permits, so it was a very high permit total for this month. Uh, all but 18 of them were completed through the expedited plan review process, so about 88% were through the expedited process, and we had nearly 400 uh, inspections in August at 398. So we had a very healthy and productive uh, August in the building side. I can answer any questions you may have on the building activity. On engineering, there's probably a lot of interest in the Fulcroft and Golden State Boulevard progress. Uh, it is progressing with activity by the railroad. They are uh, working on the gates and cantilevers. They've already, they've already completed the concrete crossing, uh, so they're continuing to make good headway. Our, tra our traffic control or our traffic signal contractor is actually out there doing the underground work, putting all the conduits, pole boxes, and so forth, and getting those set, as well as getting ready to set all the foundations for the poles. And we are working with TID. TID is uh, tasked with um, undergrounding the high overhead utility lines from uh, Sotoquist at Folker all the way to the transit center. And uh, the reason we have to have those poles uh, under all the electric utility lines underground is the poles are actually in the location where the concrete curb gutter and sidewalk needs to be. So that really is a critical path at this point in time. We have to get TID out of the way. And they are, uh, they have hired their contractor. The contractor is supposed to have begun. I don't know if they got started today or not, but hopefully soon they'll get done. Once that's done, our contractor mobilizes back, gets all the concrete work done, and once the concrete work's done, we get it paid. So we're a little behind there. We're probably looking at, at this point in time, I'm guessing, estimated maybe October, middle of October, as far as when it's going to be uh, ready to open back up the traffic. On the transit center side, right next door, we have uh, the, the slab has actually been forced. All the utility work under the slab has been installed. And then uh, they actually have started the rough framing of the, uh, the building itself. All the on-site underground is generally complete, and they are now grading and getting ready to uh, bring in some uh, the concrete work and so forth uh, tied to the, uh, the parking lot. Uh, then they plan to get all the aggregate base put in place before the wet season. Therefore, they have a nice solid base in case we need fire equipment to get out there and so forth. So that's on the engineering. Those are the kind of major projects that we're doing at this point in time, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have on those. Any questions? Right. Okay. Okay, Mike. On the transit side, uh, we uh, have processed the purchase order for the four new transit buses that, were, that the council uh, approved last month. Uh, we're also, we've issued the, uh, the purchase order for the 20 bus shelters with advertising panels and the 20 transit stop solar power lights. So we're hopeful to have those delivered at the end of S September. So we look to hopefully they start mobilizing, setting those out and getting those, thing, those uh, new bus stops set. Uh, then we'll be working with our advertising consultant or contractor, and they will be uh, working with us to get ads put on those panels. 
So, and then the lastly on the transit side, uh, we completed the evaluation of the four proposals for the next transit operator, and we'll be bringing uh, this to you on the 26th of September for consideration. So we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have on transit. No questions, but perhaps a comment. I know that the, uh, there was a long, much longer uh, discussion about advertising on buses and stops and so on and so forth. That started quite some time ago, and I'd just like to give a shout out to Council Member Bublack for initiating that discussion. I think that uh, she was instrumental in getting that started. I'd like to thank you, Amy. That was great. Absolutely, and those, uh, those revenue dollars that come in from the advertisement now is benefiting us on the fare box ratio side. So uh, the State of California and Stancog have uh, made it so they verify, yes, they are indeed a revenue source, and they can be used to offset the fare box ratio. So it's a big benefit to us. That's great. That's great. And on the Measure L uh, update, uh, staff is currently working on the West Main project. We're uh, nearing the completion of the uh, design. Uh, we're looking to, uh, the last thing we've got to complete is the plan and profile, so they're continuing to work on those. Uh, we're looking at hopefully having this out to bid in October, and then we hopefully be in construction in the spring, because obviously we're not going to be able to do a lot of that work in the winter time. But it gives us the opportunity to bid this during the better bidding climate. And uh, our, whole, our goal is to uh, be on the front end of all the work that gets completed in 2018, uh, not towards the back end when everyone's filled and they're not giving us good prices. So we're moving forward with that. And then staff is also, um, we have three projects in the first year. The second project was the Gold State project, and, and that was from West Main, from Main Street to uh, Dells. And we went out to our outside resources and asked them to give us a price for the design on that. It came back at 109300 so it was fairly expensive. So we're looking at another alternative right now. We're evaluating the idea of doing design build. The public contract code allows us to use design build process if it's over a million dollars. So I've reached out to a contractor and he's got me in touch with a engineering firm that specializes in this. So we're trying to figure out can it, will it work at this size of a project? And if it will work at this size of a project, what's the best way to do it? And do you have a template that we could use so that when we uh, don't have to reinvent the wheel? And then um, the third project is East Avenue from Golden State Boulevard to Daubenberger. Uh, that also includes a, a piece that's in the county that we work with the county to, so we do it all at one time. Uh, right now we're waiting for the utility evaluation to be completed so we have a firm understanding of what the scope of work is. Once we have that, we'll either A, go out to design uh, outside resources or we'll add it to the design build uh, if the timing works out real well. So there's your update for Measure L. We continue to move forward on all three projects trying to uh, expend the dollars that the good, our good community members uh, expect us to spend and spend them correctly. Any comments, questions? Okay. Council Member Eskett. Hey Mike, yeah, so you say the bids will go back out for West Main in October, mm -hmm. mid-October, someplace like that. Yeah. Um, do we have any estimated uh, time frame on the Golden State or East Avenue? Again, the Golden State side, the, um, we wanted to have it designed from an outside firm because we need to focus on, measure, on uh, West Main. Uh, the price came in pretty high, so we're looking at the alternative idea. If we did go out and, and hire them to do the work, we were looking at a possible bid date around March of next year. East Avenue, we have not started as far as getting bids on anything as far as the design work because we're still waiting on the uh, utility evaluation to be completed so that we can uh, make sure that we get the scope of work correct because you don't want to do change orders whenever possible because you don't get a good price on it. Maybe you could speak uh, just briefly, Mike, to the difficulty we've encountered with respect to available contractors. <laughs> May go without saying, but yeah, nonetheless. The contracting community with the, <coughs> with the uh, Measure L, um, just the amount of uh, federal dollars as well as uh, SB1 dollars that are going to be coming our way is, uh, well, they're, they're pretty booked up with work. And what, you know, during the downtime, uh, 2006-8 range. Um, not only did the city you know, constrict as far as our workforce, so did all the contracting firms. And many of them haven't ramped back up to those 2008 times. So there's, you have a kind of a, a perfect storm where you don't have a lot of, uh, they don't have a lot of crews out there. Um, there's also the issue that's happened, and we're seeing it even in our area, where many of those people that lost their jobs, 
they either be trained to do other things or they left the state to work elsewhere. So they're, we're having, everyone's having difficulty. We're having difficulty on finding engineers, building side. They're finding it difficult to actually have uh, good solid contractors come in and work for them. So we've got this perfect storm. We've got a lot of money and we've got a lot of road projects are going to be getting done. But we also have uh, the workforce is pretty small and then our unemployment rate is pretty low right now. So it's kind of a perfect storm where we continue to move forward and try to uh, uh, you know, hammer through all that. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Okay, thank you. Uh, Fire Department. Chief Carlson, nothing this evening. Okay, Municipal Services. No? Parks and Rec. Parks, Art and Rec. Amongst that and airport. So and in there too. Um, Good evening again, Mayor and Council. I wanted to let the community know um, that the wooden play structure at Donnelly Park will be temporarily closed between September 19th and 24th through a fabulous partnership with Turlock Sunrise Rotary. We are going to be having the structure resealed and many of the tiles are going to be redone. So we're very excited that that uh, structure is going to get a little added attention um, thanks to Turlock Sunrise Rotary. And so um, after the 24th, it'll be opened again for, uh, for use, but we did want to let everybody know it'll be temporarily closed. Thank you. Thanks, Allison. Uh, Chief Amifar. Vice Mayor, Mayor, Council Members, thank you. Uh, at the last Council meeting, I, I gave my public safety uh, update and the Mayor asked uh, in regards to schools what the uh, plan was for school opening. So I felt it was appropriate to come back with uh, the outcome of the uh, plan we put into effect. So having said that, I have uh, some pictures. It's always good to have pictures, ladies and gentlemen. And if you, uh, if you want to ever receive some of these notifications that you will see on the PowerPoint that's going up uh, there in front of you, just like Turlock Police Department, and you will get these Facebook uh, postings. So having... I don't want to take council's time. We're going to go ahead and just let these, uh, these Facebook postings uh, run. And if you could watch them, these are postings that went out on a time basis before school started. It was in conjunction not only with uh, the police department's Facebook page. We utilized Turlock Unified School District's uh, Facebook page, their social media. CSUS, uh, we worked hand in hand with regarding their social media. Um, we also worked on putting out a uh, phone message to uh, parents with me and the uh, superintendent of schools. And on top of that, we put together flyers uh, for the uh, Vista Center because we knew that school was opening. And on top of that, uh, we worked with allied agencies and our partners here within the city of Turlock. Uh, Mike Pitcock and uh, his staff did an outstanding job in getting those crosswalks done on a timely basis. So some of the talking points I wanted to bring out, so our social media back to school events, as you can see by the postings, uh, we began these postings in August 4th through the 24th. Overall, we reached 110,000 uh, hits. Uh, so we're getting the messages out. Uh, on day one of the school opening for our public schools, we utilized all of our uh, day shift officers, um, and we were lucky we didn't have any calls coming in at that time. We utilized all our traffic officers and I bought, brought in our core team, our community outreach and engagement team, and put them into place and our lieutenant <coughs> and myself. And we were able to hit every one of the school sites. Uh, the fire department helped us with one of our sites. Uh, so that was great too. Um, so we were out at every single one of those sites. And we also were out at our private school sites. Uh, welcoming the kids back, giving them stickers, and letting people see that uh, you need to pay attention when operating a motor vehicle. Uh, we're not in 2040, and I think that's probably when we're going to have the smart cars. Uh, they're saying it's going to be sooner than that, but, you know, we're human beings, we make mistakes, and uh, we have to understand that that car is a machine. It is not a phone booth. It is not a... Uh, uh, a table where you're having coffee. It is a, a machine that you're operating and there are human beings around you and you've got to pay attention. That's the bottom line. Um, so I wanted to put that out there. We did the flyers. Uh, Cal State assisted us with the flyers when we had the opening of the Vista. 
And we also um, conduct enforcement. From August 14th to uh, 9-11, we had 108 extra patrols uh, in our traffic patrols. And we had four traffic stops and two parking uh, sites issued during the mornings and after at all schools, and that was the day of the school. Uh, the traffic safety unit conducted 52 extra patrols around the schools, making 51 traffic stops. 20% result in educational warnings, and we issued uh, 23 parking sites out of those. The traffic unit organized an enforcement uh, operation focusing on pedestrian and bicycle violations. Our site team, we work in conjunction with the county uh, agencies, uh, Stanislaus County, the Sheriff's Department, Ceres, Highway Patrol. Unfortunately, the day we chose was uh, the day that Cal State, uh, first day of school, and that was also the day that uh, Modesto Police Sergeant was laid to rest. Uh, however, we were able to get several uh, several officers here from Ceres PD, Oakdale PD, and CSUS PD, which resulted in 51 vehicle stops, 31 pedestrian stops, and 54 citations issued. As a note, just as a note, um, we've done the traffic uh, education. We've put out our electronic signages. We've put out vehicles, whether they have an officer in them or not, just to make people aware. Um, Mr. Pitcock's crew has gone through crosswalks. We've painted them. Uh, we've put fencing up uh, to prevent people from crossing uh, dividers. We've put uh, signs up to say no right turn on a red light. Schools employing crossing guards and in this case, we had an officer giving a ticket right across the street, and we still had a traffic collision, a vehicle strike, a pedestrian. Uh, so the bottom line is, is we're going to do all the education we can. We're going to do all the enforcement we can. But you know, we're human beings, all of us. We make mistakes, so it's, it's on us to step up and pay attention. That's the report. So thank you very much for your time. I'm available for any questions. Questions? No questions, but uh, it's also somewhat indelicate to add an exclamation point to what the chief has said. But you know, folks, this is unacceptable, what's happening in our city with respect to speed, with respect to running lights, with respect to turning against uh, pedestrians, with respect to crossing medians. Uh, this has got to stop. There's no two ways about it. It's not worth the extra minute that you may save if a life is taken or damage is done. It's just not worth it. Uh, put yourself in the shoes of somebody that it happened to that will live with that experience the balance of their lives. It's not cool. Please, 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 hear the message, adhere to the message, and uh, we will continue to watch, continue to enforce, and continue to Pray that nothing additional or harmful happens, but please pay attention. Uh, comes now time uh, for public participation. We do have some speaker cards here. I'd like to call uh, this evening on Diane Bartlett for our library. Welcome, Diane. Mm. We'll take some here. It's, uh, up here. I just like to remind everybody we've got a full house this evening. We've got a full agenda this evening as well. Uh, please let's limit our, our uh, shares to five minutes, and uh, clerk, acting clerk, will help us with that. Go ahead, Ms. Bartlett. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Council and uh, Mayor Soiza, Seth by uh, phone, and good evening uh, to the members of the community. Uh, my name is Diane Bartlett. I'm the supervising librarian here at the Turlock Library, and I really appreciate the time to uh, talk a little bit about what's going on at the library. Next week is Pirate Week at the library, so come on in and do a pirate scavenger hunt. And kids can come on Tuesday the 19th at 4 and create their own pirate map. Uh, then we'll be focusing for adults and teens, we'll be focusing on um, uh, citizenship. Uh, we're having a, a, a presentation from the United States uh, Citizenship and Immigration Services Department on uh, how to become, uh, uh, the steps that you need to take on how to become a citizenship. That will be Monday the 25th at 6. And then the next day, when, or the next uh, two days later, on Wednesday the 27th at 5.30, uh, we'll be uh, targeting those planning for college and those dreamers, and although I know all that's all up in the air right now, but we do have someone 
from SCOE to come and talk to, um, uh, how to plan for college if you are uh, under the DACA. Um, and then going into October, just a couple of other things I want to bring up. Um, we have lots of uh, craft classes. On Monday the 2nd, we'll be making monster wreaths. And uh, later that evening, we'll be doing a family painting project. Um, and the next week, we'll be doing some uh, Tech Connect class at nine, on the 9th at 10 a.m. And on the 10th at 4 p.m., kids are invited to enjoy Star Wars Reads Day with us. And then finally, um, in October, we'll be starting computer basics classes every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Um, and that's done by a, uh, a, a trained volunteer. So please call us and sign up for that. And, and uh, these programs, I wanted to let you know, these free programs are brought to you by the one-eighth of a cent dedicated sales tax that, tax that supports the library. And I think you're going to hear a little bit more about that in a couple weeks. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Mr. Perez. Please come forward, sir. I understand you've got uh, something to share with us. I'm a little bit nervous. Well, excuse me, but it's okay. Um, thank you, Councilman. Take your time. Bill B. Hart. And, um, good evening, Mayor and Council members. My name is Ricardo Perez. And I've been a long term resident of Trollock for the last 42 years. I'm here before you to address a public safety concern that was brought up to my attention on August 31st, a little bit, um, about, about, about two weeks ago now. The area of concern is located at the intersection of Lyons and Colorado Avenue. It's a three-way intersection where Colorado Avenue has free-flowing traffic on both directions. It was there where I witnessed a near-miss incident involving my daughter and an SUV as she had barely crossed the middle of the street. For an unknown reason, the driver was not paying attention and almost hit her. Um, I contacted Tolak High School about the incident and I was directed to contact the Tolak Police Department. I did contact the Tolak Police Department and I made a report. I went back to Tolak High School. There I spoke with the lady about the incident and wondered where were the crosswalk personnel at the time of the incident. She replied, uh, what time did it happen? And I replied back that it was about 7.35 in the morning. To which she then replied that crosswalk personnel is not there until 7.45 to help students cross <laughs> Colorado Avenue. Long story short, I did not know that the lady I was talking to was the campus supervisor. supervisor. Um, she had commented to me that that was the area of concern not only for students, but for the campus supervisors serving as crosswalk personnel. She explained, can you imagine having to go out there and stop traffic with no stop light and no stop sign to help you out? I brought up the concern to the Tolak High School principal and Officer Aldrich, the school on-site police officer. Throughout our conversations, the different in individuals brought up a three-way stop sign but they say it might not be possible because we do have a four-way stop sign at Colorado Avenue and Canal. Up north of that and then south of that, we have another four-way stop sign, Marshall and Colorado Avenue. So I came up with a solution. The solution that I have before you, and I hope it does get approved by the City Council and the Engineering, it's called In-Roadway Working Light System. In short, it's a smart crosswalk. And basically what it is is, I don't know if you guys have ever been out to a college out there in, 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 in Modesto where you push a button and then your little flash will go off, warning drivers that somebody's crossing. That would be great if we could get that, not only for my daughter, but for the school personnel as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Perez. Appreciate that.
because we're talking cross agencies here, we're going to have to get a little cooperation and coordination right. going here. Uh, Chief Mike, uh, I, I know that we're both aware and we're on it, but perhaps we could follow up on that and, and see if we can't get something going with the school district. I go through that, uh, interestingly enough, I go through that very intersection every morning dropping kids off. Yeah. And uh, so I appreciate exactly uh, the circumstance. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Chris. you very much, Council. Thank, Thank you. Can we get the uh, number, uh, Chief, and coordinate with uh, Mr. Perez? Yes. Second, yeah. yeah. Okay. We're still talking uh, public participation, right? Is that what we're doing? Just check. Uh, okay. 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 We have several different uh, speakers that have requested uh, the opportunity to speak. Is it Danielle Ray Reyes? Did I get that right? Welcome. And I'd just like to once again remind uh, our speakers that we do have a five-minute limit. It's not starting yet, right? <laughs> it hasn't started until you get there and you actually start talking. Good evening, council members and citizens of Turlock. I come to you today as a concerned citizen. I'd like to say I was a citizen of Turlock um, before I was even born. My parents met at C.C. Stanislaus in the 1980s. Um, they saw each other across the quad and soon fell in love and had two kids. And here, me and my brother were raised in Turlock. Um, I was born in a manual medical center. I went away to college, traveled the word, world. And when I decided to have children, I decided to strategically come back to Turlock and grow my family here because I am Turlock. I even debated with my husband about buying our last house. I, I, we went back and forth between Denaire and Modesto, and I finally got my way. We we're staying in Turlock. On Monday, that all changed for me, and that decision. Um, I was alerted um, by my neighborhood watch group that white supremacist signs were being put all over our neighborhood. So I decided to take a walk to investigate it, and sure enough, one street over, and the next street over, and the next street over, on every single sign, and every single public place, were white supremacist stickers. Um, who has the stickers, if they could hold them up? Um, could you face the audience, the first one on the top? So, the one that says, equality is a false god. That's the one I took off my kids' preschool stuff then, as I was dropping them off to school in the morning. Well, I think for any citizen this would be rather alerting, right? Especially for a half African American woman who is married to a white man in Turlock in a conservative community with multi ethnic children. So, what are these stickers? These stickers are alt right stickers. I didn't know what it was. Yeah, I barely sleep most of the time, and I'm trying to work and take care of three toddlers, so I'm not in on the hip lingo. So the alt-white is a white supremacist group. You might know them for their recent participation in Charlottesville. We always say, that's there, that's the South, that's the Midwest, but it's happening. It's happening here in Turlock. While the city was very sympathetic on the issue, they were slow to respond in the sense that they're understaffed, and my husband, please stand. A bunch of community members, please stand if you took down a sticker or saw a sticker. Worked together tirelessly for hours to take the hundreds of stickers down that were plastered all over Northeast Turlock. And the only thing that kept me going is I have four-year-old twins, and they said, it was after late at night, and they said to me, Mommy, Daddy, where are you going? And we told them to fight the bad guys. So why am I here today? I'm here today for action. I'm here today to have Turlock fall in line with the cities and the state and the Senate who passed this morning a resolution to have a no tolerance policy on hate and bigotry and white supremacy in our community. 
I'm here today in the resolution presented in front of you to ask you and ask for your support to pass this resolution to say to the people of Turlock, to say to these white supremacists that we will not take this, not in our town, not in our city, not in Turlock. I'm asking today that the chief of police fully investigate with the detectives the information that I have provided and hold these people accountable. Now, if they would have wrote in the KKK or a swastika on hundreds of po public property, they would have been in jail already. We know who's doing it. We know who's doing it in our community. This is no less than gang affiliation or a dog peeing on a stop sign to mark their territory. And I say to the white supremacists here today listening or at home, not in our town, not in our city, not for my children. Please pass a resolution today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Reyes. Uh, Ann Strom. So evening, I'm here to support the previous speaker, and if I could get my little thing to come up. Um, so I want to just say that um, a reminder that, you know, A, this city is very diverse. Um, even the K through 12 schools here are quite diverse. In fact, I was just uh, looked up the numbers and about 67% of our students are students of color and it is something that I would also like to see in future uh, Turlock Police Department presentations on first day of school safety because I saw a lot of white children which I'm white I like white kids too um, but I'd kind of like to see a little more of um, people represented and that's kind of part of the problem uh, I work at a university that's majority minority, and um, I'm here to say that yes, white supremacist ideology is anyone's right to believe, but it doesn't mean that the city has to support that ideology. So I'm calling on the city to do the following. One, expend a little more energy finding, removing, and figuring out who's placing so-called alt-right, i.e. white supremacist stickers on city property and put forward a resolution that is declaring this city finding white supremacist ideology to be unacceptable, disgusting, and a resolution that states its unequivocal belief in the rights of people of color, LGBTQ plus people, uh, religious minorities, immigrants of all statuses, and any other marginalized group, that those people, all of us, have the same rights as all other community members to live their lives free of fear and harassment that is based upon white supremacist ideology. Thank you. Thanks, Anne. I'd like to call on Carla Seawright. Hello. Um, just to uh, piggyback on what they've been talking about, I'd like to read the resolution that you all have uh, in front of you. Resolution not in our community, whereas bullying, harassment, and hate crimes have increased in cities and communities across America, whereas the county of San Juan and city of Turlock welcomes and, and values diverse racial, ethnic, religious, and national backgrounds, and further recognizes that our diversity is critical to the economic, cultural, and social well-being of our community. Whereas history has tragically taught us what happens when people stand silently by and allow acts of intolerance, hatred, and violence to occur. Whereas people often feel isolated without hope and helpless to do anything individually to end hate crime. Whereas people in communities across our nation have stood up and successfully opposed any acts of discrimination committed against their neighbors. 
Therefore, be it resolved that the city of Turlock and its elected representatives stand up against bigotry, hatred-based groups, hate-based crimes of all kinds within our organization and throughout the community and declares that no one shall be discriminated against because of race, faith, ethnicity, national origin, legal status, gender, age, disability, sexual orientation, or any other real or perceived difference and that we also resolve to stand together with all people of good faith across the nation in an effort to push back the rising tide of bullying, harassment, racism, and hate crimes to proclaim not in our city, not in our country, not in our community, not in Turlock. Thank you very much, Carla. Might there be other uh, individuals desiring to contribute to the discussion this evening? Ah, uh, yes. Come forward to the microphone and please state your name for us. Good evening. My name is Denise Hunt, and um, I've lived here for a little over 40 years now. Came from the Bay Area. Uh, when I came, it was a town of about 26,000 people. It's a little bit bigger these days. Um, I love living in Turlock. I love how Turlock feels safe to me. I enjoy the diversity of living here in the Central Valley and, the, and in Turlock as well. You know, I, I enjoyed the presentation about the first day of school and the, the lengths that the, the city and the police department and the schools go to to keep our kids safe. One of the biggest problems for me with this uh, activity that's been occurring in our community is that it, it creates an atmosphere of fear and intimidation. And I will not stand for that. That's not okay. It's not what Turlock should be about. And in fact, when we see that happening, I would hope that our city and our community will rise up against that and say, no, that's not going to happen here. Thank you. Thank you very much. You got all the ladies in the white shirts. Huh? I'm Donna Inslee. I lived here for, gosh, I don't know. I'm not a native, but I've been here a long time. Taught school here for 25 years and stuff. I want to make it very clear that the alt who the alt-right really are. That's really a nice name. They're Nazis. They're not the people that we value. My dad fought in the war, World War II, against the Nazis. We thought a long time ago that that problem had been solved, but lately it's really been festering underground, and now it's out in the open. It's okay to carry a torch, march down a street yelling, blood and soil, the Nazi yell. It's okay to take a car and run over a woman because she doesn't agree with you. I never thought this would happen in my town. We need to do something as a community. We cannot let this fester like pus coming out of our town. We're better than the town up the road a little bit who said, oh, we don't want to look like Turlock. They've got those all right people down there. We're going to pass legislation that doesn't allow that to happen. Okay, we've got to be better than that. We've got to stand up, be strong. You're going to take some criticism, but in the end, you know it's the correct thing to do please pass the resolution. Thank you. And once again, just remember, we're limited to five minutes on our comments. Please state your name for the record. My name is Ivan Clay, and I've been a resident of Turlock for many years. I went to school here. I would have been here sooner if you'd... I want you to synchronize those lights on Gear Road. I'm talking to the <laughs> 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 
Danielle, uh, who spoke first, and her mother and father, we were students together at Stanislaus in the, in the early 80s. And I will tell this, this body that as a student at Stanislaus in the 70s, in the 80s, it was more of a comfortable feeling than it is in 2017. Um, we all got stories we could tell. Uh, I've been in Turlock uh, for 40 plus years, living in this valley my entire life. I can tell you the concerns are real. Um, and as been stated earlier, something needs to be done. And I would hope something more than just a conversation. Um, and it, I'm not here to tell war stories, but I'm here to let you know the concern that's been voiced is, is real. And it would be nice that something could be done. And you know, it'd take this to bring me out to the city council, uh, having been here for as long as I've been here. But I will tell you uh, the concerns are real. And I look forward to, to the response from the committee. Thank you. Hello, my name is Laura Machado. I'm a teaching credential student at CSU Stanislaus currently. Um, some of you might remember the news article that came out on multiple channels and newspapers about uh, some protesters interrupting President Jun's speech. I was one of them because we want to draw attention to the rise of white supremacism on our campus as well as in our community. We all know of a certain white supremacist who is the leader of a white supremacist org called Identity Europa. Actually, he stepped down, but he's still in our community and he still has an influence. We want to address the city to raise the issue that we cannot stand aside while white supremacists continue to gain influence within our communities. It's addressing racial tensions that have remained in our communities historically from the founding of our country and we need to take a stance. We need to be better than our history. We need to rise up. We can't be blind to race. We can't be blind to hate. We need to take a stance and say your freedom of speech doesn't outweigh the freedom of people to survive, to exist as people of color, as people who are marginalized on the basis of their sexuality, of their gender, of anything, but especially of race because that has been our country's cardinal sin. We have to step up. Every white person in our community needs to stand up and push the white supremacists away from us and the city needs to take a strong stance against white supremacism because standing aside, standing neutral, only reinforces their power. White supremacism has been a part of this country from the very beginning and by not choosing to stand against it, you reinforce it. Neutrality isn't neutral. It's reinforcing the power that already exists. We need to take a stance and I'm holding you accountable, okay? I'm here on behalf of my loved ones, my friends, my community members. And we need to remember that they are here too. Whether they're, whatever their race, whether, whatever their immigration status, they are members of our community. And they deserve protection even, even more for all the ways they are marginalized. We need to be better. And I'm holding everyone here accountable for that. Might there be other commenters or other uh, viewpoints that would like to be expressed? Yes, sir. All right back here, sir. Go right ahead. My name is Francisco Reyes, and uh, <clears throat> I just like to point out something. This is a. Uh, some people say that history repeats itself. I said it doesn't. In the 1930s and the 20s, when the Hitler came to power, the Ku Klux Klan ran in the United States freely. People were real docile. 
They didn't fight back. This is a different times. And I think it's, this thing has to stop. And don't do it because of the color of my skin. Some years ago, without wanting to, I find myself in the middle of this, uh, the Norteño gangs. Let me tell you, this is a scary people. You don't want those two extreme groups to collide. Because these people don't think, these other people don't think. And in the 30s, you were white, you don't associate with somebody with color, that was okay. You were out of trouble. Not at this time. My kids, your kids, your grandkids, any color. If we let this, we let this thing go, uh, we hope we don't, for everybody's sake. And uh, that's what I'm that's what I'm here to make this point. This is my fear because I know this group. I know this, uh, those right now, Sureños and Norteños, they're killing each other for a color. They will. Man, don't let them start killing for the color of the skin. And these are dudes that are, it will be tragic in either way. You have, I mean, I have my neighbors. Now they're running around my street with uh, these big flags. The flag should be a pride. He belongs to us. It should not be used as a tool of intimidation. And I'm all, I don't pay attention to them, but don't let those youngsters get into that because us, we don't want to be there. Thank you. Council members, thank you. My name is Anthony Castillo. I'm a lifelong resident of Turlock. Born here, graduated Turlock High in 99, graduated from Stanislaus in 2010. I just want to say that it has been very disturbing to see the rise of this right here in our community. Just like what Laura said earlier, this is something that isn't foreign and across the country like in Charlottesville. This is happening right here. This is Mr. Nathan Denigo, who is a student over at Stanislaus, who is on par with Richard Spencer, trying to get people to commit violence and recruit people using the places that we've created to educate and protect our kids. Uh, it's something that we have to take a stand for, and we have to let people know that we're beyond that. And there's no equivalence of sides here. As soon as we have people in black masks showing up over here, we can pass a little resolution of that. Right, but right now we have an immediate threat. The immediate threat is people who are trying to seduce confused and lost young men and sell them the false promise of white nationalism and the, twist them into becoming violent people. Like Francisco said, they're no different than gang members. Let's treat them like gang members. Thank you. Might there be other speakers or perhaps speakers on another issue? Okay, seeing none. I'd like to take, uh, just make this following comment. Uh, we will be taking these comments under advisement. Uh, we're taking them very seriously. This is not something we casually accept on a Tuesday evening. Uh, city manager, I'd like for us to take a look at this resolution. I'd like for the police chief, for fire, for uh, fellow council, uh, as well, our meetings, our get-togethers with both district and university. Uh, I believe that there may be a, an item of substance here that we need to approach and to achieve some sort of resolution on. So uh, let's be doing that. And I think uh, with Mayor's concurrence, we'll see if we can do that uh, within the next uh, couple of weeks. But I'd like to get that. Hi, yes, go ahead, Mayor. Uh, absolutely, I agree with you. Listening to Don and, and Laura and everyone else's comment, I agree, Turlock is better than this, and uh, I, I look forward to sitting down with them, with you, and uh, looking at this resolution and seeing what we can bring back uh, to make a statement about how Turlock does stand against bigotry and discrimination and everything that they've been talking about. So thank you so much for bringing that uh, forward, and uh, look forward to having this conversation. This conversation
conversation will in fact take place, folks. This is not something that we can act on this evening. Uh, we very much can receive the comment, uh, receive the input. Uh, it's an item that is of concern to us when it has to do with illegal behavior, and we will be pursuing resolution on this issue. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other public participation? If not, we're going to proceed then. Uh, entertain a motion waiving the reading of all ordinances on the agenda, so except by title. Uh, moved by <laughs> Council Member Esker, <laughs> seconded by Council Member Bublack. Roll call, please. Council Member Esker? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublack? Yes. Mayor Soyset? Yes. Okay. Any declarations of uh, the motion passes? Any declaration of conflicts of interest and or disqualifications? No. None. Seeing none, uh, we do have in the agenda disclosure of the top ten uh, maximum contributors by candidate. Come now, a consent calendar. We have uh, two items that will be pulled this evening. Item 5L will be, consider will be uh, removed from the consent for consideration this evening, and item 5J is being uh, removed from the agenda and will be addressed at the next council meeting. Um, what is the will of the council with uh, respect to the balance? Vice Mayor, uh, I also wanted to pull 5W for a brief discussion. 5W Correct. will also pull. Okay. And did I hear a motion, Council Member Blue Black? Yes. Okay. Second. And there is a second. A motion by Council Member Boo Black, seconded by Council Member Esker, uh, minus items uh, L, J, and W. City Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Esker? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublack? Yes. Council Member Soy Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, consent calendar advances. Uh, you wanted to speak to measure uh, or item number W, Council Member Esker? Yes. Um, I spoke to the chief earlier, and um, actually, I just wanted him to give a brief synopsis on the program, the agreement with the uh, Secret Service. When I saw Secret Service in there, I'm going like, what's going on? It made me nervous. <laughs> so I just wanted him to give me a little little bit of information on it. And uh, so he's got a brief statement for us. Just just to let us know what's happening. Chief. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor, Council Member, and uh, Mayor. Uh, the item before you is requesting a, a motion to approve an agreement between the City of Turlock and the United States Secret Service, allowing staff to utilize equipment issued by the United States Secret Service, and authorizing the City Manager to sign an agreement. Uh, what this is, is that the Secret Service is part of our cyber security for the United States along with the FBI and numerous other agencies. Uh, without getting into some critical information in regards to equipment and training, the Secret Service offered training um, for the multiple agencies in the city of Turlock uh, utilized that opportunity free of charge to send our high-tech detective, which council approved us to have last year, thank you, uh, to this training. Uh, with that, uh, the Secret Service has provided us... Can you hold just one moment, Chief? Thanks, Allison. Go ahead, Chief. Sorry. So the training was with the National um, Computer Forensics Institute training, and it, uh, it involves some very extensive forensics type training for computers along with other electronic devices. The Secret Service has provided uh, Turlock Police Department with $30,000 worth of equipment. That equipment is hardware and software that are intrinsic to the, uh, the manner in which we conduct forensic uh, results and tests on these uh, computers, tablets, et cetera, et cetera. I can't get into the type of equipment it is and I can't get into the software that's available. I can tell you that the City of Turlock cannot afford to buy it. So it was given us to us free of charge upon attending this. I can tell you that the Secret Service uh, was holding it at the airport uh, upon a request from me to please let us utilize it until we can bring this forth to council. Uh, 
They did so, and, and it has already been instrumental in several uh, child pornography cases. You may have seen on Facebook in regards to individuals that were arrested for child porn, along with several other cases we currently have pending, including homicide solutions. So it is extremely important to our uh, high-tech detectives, and uh, it's free of charge. So it is not, it is not a type of... Uh, communicate that you may have heard. Uh, it doesn't monitor anybody's cell phone or anything like that. It's actually items that we have in hand through either arrests or search warrants that allows us to gain access and uh, follow that equipment. Okay. Any additional questions? How about public uh, question you. or comment? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the council for consideration. Moved by Council Member Escater, seconded by Council Member Bublack. Uh, clerk, please read back and call the roll. Approving an agreement between the City of Turlock and the United States Secret Service, allowing staff to utilize equipment issued by USSS and authorizing the City Manager to sign the agreement. Council Member Escare? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublack? Yes. Mayor Soyset? And that motion carries. Thank you very much, Council. Um, 5L has been green sheeted. I think there are copies in the back for us. I'm going to call on uh, Mr. Cook. Good evening, Vice Mayor, Mayor, members of the City Council. This is a, uh, an agreement between the City of Turlock and uh, Townsend Public Affairs for legislative ad advocacy services, uh, grant writing services. We've had an agreement with them since 2013. Um, however, given the uh, city's uh, financial situation and the ongoing negotiations with employee groups, it may be prudent to adjust the initial term of this contract. I uh, just make it a shorter term initially through the end of this calendar year, at which point you'll have better clarification of the uh, fiscal implications of the contract, where you are with employee negotiations. And at that point, if you choose to do so, there's the option in the amended agreement in your green sheet there to do two uh, further one-year extensions with Townsend should you choose to do so. So uh, just basically given the uh, situation we're in, it, maybe it's a chance to take a little pause right here and look at a number of these professional services contracts. So I'd be happy to answer any questions on that. Questions? Um, I do have a couple. Uh, number one, is it, uh, is, do, uh, is extending the contract through the end of this calendar year the only option that's acceptable? What about a month to month until such time as uh, we resolve the uh, labor negotiations? I mean, if we, if we conclude those and find that we don't have, uh, I'd also hate to see those negotiations hampered by right. albeit 5,000 a month. However, you get my point. Right, it, it basically, it's basically written as a month to month contract, okay. but subject to your availability of funds. Uh, my own recommendation is uh, somewhat selfishly, uh, um, Townsend is helping us right now with the funding for the North Valley program, and we're very close to getting our funding agreement with the state for low interest financing. And so I think it's prudent if we keep them in, in, in play right now to help us with that project. And again, that is funded out of enterprise funds. So um, I think it's worth the investment to keep them on board, at least for that initial period. Okay. okay. Public comment, questions? Bringing it back to council, what is the will? I agree with uh, Mr. Cook's assessment, and I think that there's no bearing on uh, Townsend's performance. Uh, but I think that we should approve a contract just to the end of the uh, calendar year. So I'd like to make that motion. Okay. Okay, it's been moved by the mayor in absentia and seconded by council member Bublack. Uh, can you read that amended uh, motion, please? Yes. Approving an agreement between the City of Turlock and Townsend Public Affairs for lobbying services with an amended term from September 12, 2017 through December 31, 2017 with two possible 12-month extensions ending December 31, 2018 and December 31, 2019 respectively and an amended compensation amount of 5000 per calendar month in an annual amount not to exceed $60,000. That is correct. Go ahead. Thank you. Council Member Escare? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublack? Yes. Mayor Soyseth? Yes. And that motion carries. Thank you very much, Council. 
Uh, okay, I do believe that concludes our uh, consent. Jay. I'm sorry? Jay. And that's been, uh, I guess we do have to move to schedule it. Is that what we have to do? No, I just I, I did. I pulled it and I have uh, rescheduled it for the 26th. Oh. The additional staff work Mr. required. Pardon me? The, the chamber representative was here the whole day for it. I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Great. I, I agree with the vice mayor moving it to the next, mayor, or the next meeting when the full council is here to consider it. Okay. Do we need a motion uh, to? Reschedule it at this point, uh, manager or clerk, do you know at this point? I don't believe we do. We'll just be, uh, we do have Mr. Uh, Wolf online, don't we? Like yes. um, yeah, hi. Um, I would recommend that if you're going to reschedule it to a date certain that you uh, um, do so by motion. If you're going to pull it off indefinitely and, and reschedule it another time, then no motion is necessary. Uh, very well. Time is of the essence. I appreciate the uh, input. Time is of the essence. However, uh, I'd like the benefit of a full council hearing on this particular item. And the chair will entertain a motion to reschedule for September 26th. So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council Member Esker, seconded by the mayor, to reschedule item J for the September 26th meeting. Uh, Clerk, can you call the roll on that, please? Council Member Esquerre? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublak? Yes. Mayor Soyseth? Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Council. That uh, motion has been uh, rescheduled. That issue has been rescheduled by motion for September 26th meeting. Okay. Uh, final readings this evening. What have we got? I think it's an ordinance amending Turlock <laughs> Municipal Code, Title VI, Chapter 1, Article 7, Section 05, regarding retail sale of dogs and cats. Entertain a motion? Or no, we have to have the reading first, don't we? Clerk, could you read it for us? Amending Turlock Municipal Code, Title VI, Chapter 1, Article 7, Section 5, regarding retail sale of dogs and cats to replace the word chapter with the word article as introduced at the August 8, 2017 City Council meeting was passed and adopted 5-0 by the following vote. Council Member Esquerre? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublak? Yes. Mayor Soyseth? Yes. Okay, that motion uh, carries. Moving on to public hearings this evening. Um, as a matter of fact, before we do that, I'm going to, I'd like to take something out of order. <laughs> I think I can do that because I'm presiding. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> what do you think, Mayor? Can I get away with that? Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Because I'm in town. Um, I'd like to move us to scheduled matters if I could. Uh, item A, excuse me, incorrect. I went one page too short. Um, it is under scheduled matters. However, I'd like to direct our attention to item D, and that is a request to adopt the City of Turlock Active Military Banner Program and designate Countryside Drive between Fulkerth Road and Monta Vista Avenue as the inaugural installation corridor. And I'd like to call upon, wow, radar, <laughs> Ms. Van Gilder to uh, make the presentation this evening. Thank you very much, Vice Mayor, Mayor and Council. Um, it is truly my honor and privilege to present this um, item to you tonight. Um, this particular project comes um, as a result of work that our Veterans com uh, Committee has put together as well as um, a very um, passionate and dedicated member of our community and former employee who essentially uh, brought this idea forward uh, to to us for consideration, and we are so thankful that that she did because we believe that through that idea and all of the hard work of our committee and staff, um, we've put together a pretty special program uh, to recognize our active military members. And so, uh, what this particular um, program will do is it will recognize um, active military members from our community. Um, and it, they will be recognized along countryside between Fulkerth Road and Monta Vista, essentially our inaugural uh, corridor for the program. 
and banners uh, with their picture and their area of, of service will be um, displayed along the light poles on that corridor. And our intent is that they will hang for a period of one year, wherein that after that period is over, they will be um, retired through a, a ceremony. Um, and then we hope that the following year we'll have a whole new batch of, of um, recognition to, to display. And so um, tonight I, I would like to ask uh, Ms. Trish Panos to come up, please, since she was the um, individual who brought this idea forward. I know that um, she has a few words that she would like to share with you. Hi, Trish. Good evening. I am a military mom. September 18, 1997 is a day I will never forget as a parent. Driving my son Jason, to, who is a recent Turlock High School graduate, to the Navy recruiting office in Modesto so he could forget, begin his naval career. As a parent, I can't express to you how proud I was of my son's decision or how much I wanted to hold my little boy forever. Of course, I had to make sure nobody in the recruiting office was watching because he was a little embarrassed. As any parent or family member will tell you, those are mixed emotions then go with a decision to, for anybody who joins the military. First and foremost, they will tell you how proud they are. The active banner program is a reminder to those families and active military members that Turlock, our community, is proud, not only with the community support of them, but it will support their families here at home. With the Thousand Flags Initiative and now the Active Military Banner Program, all who visit our community will see how proud we are of those who have chosen to serve before, now, and in the future. As I drive around Turlock, I tear up seeing so many flags displayed, so many proud Americans that we have living in our community. I'm very proud to be an American. I'm very proud to be a part of this community as well. On a personal note, Monday will mark my son's 20th anniversary for the, his service in the Navy, and October 1st he will officially retire. As a parent, I'm not sure I could be any prouder ever of him. I am, however, hoping I get to hold him for a long time and don't care who sees. Mr. Mayor, I want to thank you for listening to my proposal that day. Sergeant Russ Holman is the one who actually told me about this program down south, and I kind of ran with what he had shared with me. So thank you, Russ. Thank you, all of you, for your time, for your supporting the active military banner, and thank you and your staff for putting it all together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Trish. So, Council, tonight we're asking you to consider adopting the Active Military Banner Program. And if I could get some assistance from Amber, a.k.a. Vanna, <laughs> uh, we'd like to display to you uh, what the banners will look like. Wow. So they're eight, they're eight feet in length, and um, believe it or not, this is the same length as the banners along Monta Vista near the university. So they don't look as big, I think, as you're driving by, but um, we, we modeled it after what they have there in terms of the size. So we're very pleased with the, um, the way that they uh, came out in, in terms of production. Um, we feel that it's a, a fitting tribute to um, the active military members in our community. This happens to be one of our own active military members, and I know their family is here tonight, so thank you very much for allowing us to um, to use her image to, to kick it off. It's, it meant a lot to have someone local to be able to unveil this with. So, um, so Council, this item's before you for consideration, and there's a related item right after this one that I would also um, be happy to present when you're ready. Okay. Are there any questions? Any questions? Any comments? How proud of the Larsons. What do you think, <laughs> Mom, Dad? <laughs> well, without further ado, I'll bring it back to Council for consideration. Mayor? Can you yeah, I definitely, it, it's just a great program, and I'm just so excited to see it come to fruition. Um, I, before, I'd like to motion I'd like to hear from David Pina. <laughs> Put him on the spot. Gina can't talk. She's going to talk. Gina's going to talk, sure. Sure. Come on, Pastor David. 
Well, I think we can echo you. We're not yeah. 20 years into the process, but, but thank you for your service <coughs> because it does take a family supporting them. It does, and we are first time with we're this, uh, so we're learning as we go. Yeah. But we are incredibly proud of our daughter and her service, and all who've served alongside her, and to know that our city stands with us and um, supports our military and those who mm -hmm. serve to protect. It just means the world to us. Yeah. So. Thank you. Thank you for the honor. Thank you. Thank you for the honor. So, Mayor, did I hear a motion coming our way? I absolutely will motion it. The uh, Marine on the dais will second it. I'd be delighted to second that motion. <laughs> absolutely delighted. Uh, okay, request, uh, go ahead, read the uh, motion, if you would, clerk, and call the roll. Adopting the City of Turlock Active Military Banner Program and designating Countryside Drive between Fulkerth Road and Monta Vista Avenue as the inaugural installation corridor as introduced. Councilmember Esquerre? Yes. Councilmember DeHart? Yes. Councilmember Bublack? Yes. Mayor Soyseth? Yes. And if we could, uh, that's great. The motion carries. If we could introduce that companion uh, issue at this point, Ms. Van Gilder. Mayor and Council, it's uh, also my honor. I'm a little emotional, sorry, I don't know where that came from. Um, it's amazing when partnerships can come together and we have a tremendous partner in our farmer's market and they are asking Council to consider their $5,000 annual payment to be used to kick off the inaugural year of our active military banner program and are asking Council to consider designating the $5,000 to essentially pay for the banners um, so that our active military families don't have to come up with that cost, at least for the inaugural year, and we're hoping that it will inspire other organizations to come forward as well to make similar donations so that essentially no active family member or, excuse me, any active member or their family has to essentially pay out of pocket for this privilege. So um, with that, I would answer any questions. And I'm sorry. Valeria Jimenez is here tonight representing Golden State Farmers Market and the Central Park Evening Market, and I know she also wanted to add a few words. Hello, everyone. Mayor Soyseth, councils of, councils of the members, <laughs> <laughs> members of the council. I, I'm choking up. I just keep on choking up over this. Um, when we first learned about this project, it was unanimous and immediate, um, our response on just, we had to be a part of this. And when I think about the farmer's market, I think about all our local farmers, our local producers, our local growers and artisans, and we all have the same common thread. That is, hmm. it's, okay. it's to pursue the American dream. And that's a dream that would not be possible if it weren't for those who are actively serving our country, fighting for our safety daily, and protecting our freedom. So it's because of those heroes that we are who we are. It's because of those heroes that we, we can chase after our own dreams. And this is a drop in the bucket when it comes to our gratitude, the gratitude we should be expressing to others. Uh, but it's, it's a small role, and, and we're so grateful, humbled, and honored uh, to be a part of it, and on behalf of the Central Park Market, we are we are excited to see what else comes from it. So thank you, and thank you, Allison, for bringing this up to us. So, are there other comments or questions at this point? Okay, what is the will of the council? Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Uh, clerk, could you please read that resolution and call the roll. Appropriating $5,000 to account number 269-60-614-414-44001-000 supplies funded by the donation received from Golden State Farmers Market Association to be used for the City of Turlock Active Mil Military Banner Program. Council Member Esquerre? Yes. Councilmember DeHart? Yes. Councilmember Bublack? Yes. Mayor Soyseth? Yes. 
That motion carries. And before we leave, uh, Mayor, you're going to have to do this in absentia. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, I'd like to have us censor the uh, first banner in the middle of the room. And I think there's a Sergeant Holman back there, certainly the Larsons, the council, uh, those folks that should be in the picture. Why don't you come on up and let's surround this banner, get a good picture. There's got to be somebody out here, Eric, that could take that picture for us. You're killing me, that Mayor. Uh, you know, Mayor, we'll hold a, we'll hold a silhouette for you. <laughs> Okay, I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. No. Oh, we get still, oh. <laughs> still got considerable business to do, but uh, that uh, investment uh, in that particular program is well worth our effort and, and attention, so thank you very much for that. Uh, we're going to return back to 8A. Seven. Like I said, 7A. Request to supersede and replace resolution number 2016-108 and adopt an updated cost recovery percentage and schedule of fees and charges for city services. And guess who? <laughs> Go right ahead. The item before you tonight is to supersede and replace resolution 2016-108 and adopt updated cost recovery percentages and the schedule of fees and charges for city services to include city recreational services. You first saw this item on August 8, 2017, where it, was an adopt, where it was adopted. And at the conclusion of the meeting, staff determined that a potential procedural error may have existed relative to public noticing requirements. Hmm. So at that time, uh, staff established a refund process for customers that were affected and impacted by the change in fees. And since then, staff has re-noticed the public hearing item pursuant to the applicable laws and is requesting council tonight consideration of this item. Upon approval by the city council, the updated fees and charges will then become effective. And there's a schedule with your right. staff report tonight. If you have any questions. Thanks, Julie. Are there questions before us? Pretty self-explanatory. Any comments from the public on this? And bringing it back to council, what is the will of the council? Second. Okay. It's been moved by Councilmember Bublack, seconded by the mayor. Uh, clerk, could you please read back and call the roll? Superseding and replacing resolution number 2016-108 and adopting updated cost recovery percentages and the schedule of fees and charges for city services to include city recreational services pursuant to Turlock Municipal Code Section 3-3-301 at SEC. Councilmember Escare? Yes. Councilmember DeHart? Yes. Councilmember Bublak? Yes. Mayor Soysa? Yes. And that motion carries. Thank you very much, Council. Um, now items uh, 7B through 7I uh, are multiple uh, issues involving the same basic subject. So we're basically going to be handling them concurrently, but we will be ex uh, conducting a separate vote on each. So Mike, uh, basically what we're going to talk about is a request to order the improvements in formation of Potter's Landing, Hillmar Cheese, Taco Bell, Dust Bowl, Valley Milk, Blue Diamond, Turlock Walnut, and Fulkerth Chevron. 
Uh, could you go ahead and make your presentation, please? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, the item before you is the formation of the landscape and lighting districts and the benefit assessment districts um, for the following areas. Item 7B, as you stated, was Potter's Landing, which is eight lot subdivision uh, on Hawkeye, just east of, Haw of your road. 7C is Hillmar Cheese, which is the uh, processes milk products, and this is at 3600 Canal Drive. Uh, 7D is Taco Bell, located at Roberts and Golden State Boulevard. 7E is Dust Bowl Brewery, located at Fulkerth and Diane. 7F was Valley Milk, which processes milk products at 400 North Washington Road. 7G was Blue Diamond, which processes almonds at 1300 Washington Road. 7H is Turlock Walnut Company, which processes walnuts at 3rd and D Street. 7I is Folkworth Chevron, located at Folkworth and Diane Drive. The Landscape and Lighting Act of 1972 and the Benefit Assessment Act of 1982 allowed for the formation of assessment districts and benefit assessment areas. The purpose of these assessments and benefit assessment uh, areas is to ensure developer, development pays for its own maintenance and operation of the street lights. Um, it also pays for the uh, maintenance of public landscaping and as well as street sweeping and future slurry seals along its frontage. At this bit time, I'd be happy to answer any questions on any of those. Can you answer a question for me, Mike, on Fulkerth Chevron? Yes. At Diane and Fulkerth? Yeah, it's not there yet. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> generally, generally they, uh, these are always done prior to the opening of the businesses, right. but we were going through a process of retooling all of our resolutions and getting it up to the latest uh, um, regulatory wording and so forth. So some of these fell back and they started business and everything else uh, that now we're bringing them into the system once we got all that dealt with. So now we're now you're seeing this catch up. So but traditionally it is always done prior to or just as they go into construction. Because of the way we've been handling this particular series of items this evening, I just want to make real certain uh, that we uh, address the fact that there is nothing materially different other than name of business and address. That is correct. One to the next. That There's is no yeah. separate deal cut with any of these other folks. Or it's purely a a, a uh, equation. We put in the linear footage of curb and gutter, the square footage of road. We put in a linear footage of uh, landscaping and the number of street lights goes into a formula and that formula kicks out the cost. And so there is no difference. As far as how it's calculated, there is a difference in the fee based on where the property is and what the parameters are. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Comments? Public comment or questions? Seeing none, bringing it back to the council. We'll start off with item B. Okay, any, uh, we have to, we still have to move it though, right? Yes. We still have to, so. Are you advancing the resolution? Advance. Okay, good. Are we, do we have a second on that? Second. Okay. It's been <laughs> the resolution has been moved by Councilmember Esker, seconded by Councilmember Bublack. Uh, Clerk, could you please uh, read the resolution and call the roll? Ordering the improvements and formation of Potter's Landing Subdivision Development Project Number 1457, Landscaping and Lighting Benefit Assessment District in the Street Maintenance Benefit Assessment Area and confirming the diagram and benefit assessments as set forth in the annual report of the Engineer of Work and the Levying and Collection of Assessments set forth therein for fiscal year 2017-2018 for the Potter's Landing Subdivision Development Project Number 1457, Landscaping and Lighting Benefit Assessment District and the Street Maintenance Benefit Assessment Area pursuant to Resolution Number 97-128. Council Member Esquerre? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublock? Yes. Mayor Soyseth? Yes. That resolution carries. On the item uh, number C regarding Hillmar Cheese, I'd like to advance that resolution. Second. So I went ahead and advanced it. Uh, Council Member Esquerre has seconded it. Uh, Clerk, could you read that resolution and call the roll, please? Ordering the RIP Improvements and Formation of the Hillmar Cheese Development Project Number 1533, Landscape, Landscaping and Lighting Benefit Assessment District and the Street Maintenance Benefit Assessment Area and confirming the diagram and benefit assessments as set forth in the annual report of the Engineer of Work and the levying and collection of assessments set forth therein for fiscal year 2017-2018 
for the Hillmar Cheese Development Project Number 1533, Landscaping and Lighting Benefit Assessment District, and the Street Maintenance Benefit Assessment Area pursuant to Resolution Number 97128. Council Member Escare? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublock? Yes. Mayor Soyseth? Yes. Uh, thank you, Council. That motion uh, or that resolution carries. And now come item D for the Taco Bell. What is the will of the Council? Move to advance. Council Member Escare advances. Uh, Council Member Boo Black seconds. Uh, clerk, could you please read the resolution and call the roll? Ordering the improvements and formation of the Taco Bell Development Project Number 1534. Landscaping and Lighting Benefit Assessment District and the Street Maintenance Benefit Assessment Area and confirming the diagram and benefit assessment as set forth in the Annual Report of the Engineer of Work and the levying and collection of assessment set forth therein for fiscal year 2017-2018 for the Taco Bell Development Project Number 1534 Landscaping and Lighting Benefit Assessment District and the Street Maintenance Benefit Assessment Area Pursuant to resolution number 97-128. Council Member Escare? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublak? Yes. Mayor Soyseth? Yes. And that resolution carries. Uh, item number D pertaining to Dust Bowl Brewery. Could you please read that resolution and also call the roll? Move to advance. Do you want a motion? Move like it. I said, how about a motion? Okay, how about we did that? Councilmember Escare has uh, advanced the resolution. Councilmember Bublak has seconded. Uh, now. Ordering the improvements and formation of the Dust Bowl Brewery Development Project Number 1535, Landscaping and Lighting Benefit Assessment District, and the Street Maintenance Benefit Assessment Area, and confirming the diagram and benefit assessment as set forth in the annual report of the Engineer of Work and the levying and collection of assessments set forth therein for fiscal year 2017-2018 for the Dust Bowl Brewery Development Project Number 1535, Landscaping and Lighting Benefit Assessment District and the Street Maintenance Benefit Assessment Area pursuant to Resolution Number 97-128. Council Member Escare? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublak? Yes. Mayor Soyseth? Yes. And that resolution carries. Item F, pertaining to Valley Milk, what is the will? Move to advance. Second. Council Member Escare has advanced the resolution. Council Member Bublack has seconded. Clerk, could you please read and call the roll. Ordering the improvements and formation of the Valley Milk Development Project Number 1737, Landscaping and Lighting Benefit Assessment District, and the Street Maintenance Benefit Assessment Area, and confirming the diagram and benefit assessments as set forth in the annual report of the Engineer of Work and the levying and collection of assessments set forth therein for fiscal year 2017-18 for the Valley Milk Development Project Number 1737, Landscaping and Lighting Benefit Assessment District and the Street Maintenance Benefit Assessment Area pursuant to Resolution Number 97-128. Council Member Escare? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublak? Yes. Mayor Soyseth? Yes. And that resolution passes. Um, item G pertaining to Blue Diamond. Uh, second. It's been moved and seconded. Moved by Council Member Escare, seconded by Council Member Bublak. Clerk, please read the resolution and call the roll. Ordering the improvements and formation of the Blue Diamond Development Project Number 1738, Landscaping and Lighting Benefit Assessment District, and the Street Maintenance Benefit Assessment Area, and confirming the diagram and benefit assessments as set forth in the annual report of the Engineer of Work and the levying and collection of assessments set forth therein for fiscal year 2017-2018 for the Blue Diamond Development Project Number 1738, Landscaping and Lighting Benefit Assessment District and the Street Maintenance Benefit Assessment Area pursuant to Resolution Number 97-128. Council Member Escare? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublak? Yes. Mayor Soyseth? Abstain. And that carries uh, with a three voting in the affirmative, one abstention and one absent. Um, item number H, pardon me? Okay, good. Item number H pertaining to Turlock Walnut, what is the will? 
of the council. Move to advance. Council Member Escare has moved to advance. Council Member Bublack uh, has seconded. Uh, clerk, please read the resolution and conduct the roll. Ordering the improvements and information of the Turlock Walnut Company Development Project Number 1739, Landscaping and Lighting Benefit Assessment District and Street Maintenance Benefit Assessment Area, and confirming the diagram and benefit assessments as set forth in the annual report of the engineer of work and the levying and collection of assessments set forth therein for fiscal year 2017-2018 for the Turlock Walnut Company development project number 1739 landscaping and lighting benefit assessment district and the street maintenance benefit assessment area pursuant to resolution number 97-128. Council member Escare? Yes. Council member DeHart? Yes. Council member Bublack? Yes. Mayor Soyset? Yes. Come item I, pertaining to Full Kurth Chevron, that's not there yet. Um, what is the will? Advance. Okay. Council Member Bublack has seconded the motion advanced by Council Member Escare. Had to change it up there, folks. Uh, please read the resolution, uh, Clerk, and call the roll. Ordering the improvements and formation of the Full Kurth Chevron Development Project Number 1740. Landscaping and Lighting Benefit Assessment District and the Street Maintenance Benefit Assessment Area and confirming the diagram and benefit assessment as set forth in the annual report of the Engineer of Work and the levying and collection of assessments set forth therein for fiscal year 2017-2018 for the Folk Hearth Chevron Development Project Number 1740, Landscaping and Lighting Benefit Assessment District and the Street Maintenance Benefit Assessment Area pursuant to resolution number 97-128. Council Member Escare? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublack? Yes. Mayor Soyseth? Yes. And that resolution carries as well. Thank you very much, Council, for your endurance uh, through that process. Now comes scheduled matters. Uh, before us now um, is the uh, items A through, uh, excuse me, 8A through 8C. And once again, we're going to be handling these items concurrently. We will be voting on both, uh, separately, on both the resolution and the vote on the motions um, or the different uh, resolutions involved with each. It should be noted that uh, Council did receive a letter uh, or fax from Ms. Mendez on, this, on these particular items. That will be filed uh, officially uh, in the minutes of this evening's proceedings. Uh, uh, to ensure inclusion. Would you like to speak now? I would, thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, Vice yes. Mayor, Council Members, and Mayor. Uh, I will be speaking, as Vice Mayor stated, on uh, scheduled matters 8A, 8B, and 8C. These are all very similar in nature and hosted by the same organization. On July 7th, 2017, applicant Edwina Rocha of Sacred Heart Catholic Church submitted two separate special event permit applications. These applications were to host the following events. Our Lady of Fatima celebration procession, as well as the Our Lady of Guadalupe celebration procession. Each closure has been requested for pedestrian safety, event purposes, and to allow cleanup and setup time beforehand. Our Lady of Fatima celebration event and closure requests have been proposed for the following specified times to accommodate event purposes. The first procession in the series is proposed to be held on Saturday, September 30th from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. The closure request for this procession includes Lyons Avenue between North Rose Street and Colorado Avenue, Colorado Avenue between Lyons Avenue and Cooper Avenue, and Cooper Avenue between Colorado Avenue and Oak Street. The second procession is proposed to be held on Sunday, October 1st from 9.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. And the associated closure includes Lyons Avenue between North Rose Street and Colorado Avenue, Colorado Avenue between Lyons Avenue and Cooper Avenue, and Cooper Avenue between Colorado Avenue and Oak Street. A third procession is proposed to take place during this event. That item is not before you tonight, however, was submitted as a special event uh, to the special event committee at a later date. To accommodate the public notification timeline that uh, Council has set, that item will be brought back before you on September 26th. 
Uh, the second application submitted was for the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe celebration procession. This procession and closure request has been proposed to take place on Tuesday, December 12th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. This event will only host one procession. And that, uh, the closure request includes North Rose Street between Cooper Avenue and Cahill Avenue, Cahill Avenue between North Rose Street and Bell Street, Bell Street between Cahill Avenue and Lyons Avenue, and Lyons Avenue between Bell Street and Oak Street. City of Sherlock Traffic Engineering has reviewed these closure requests. The Special Event Committee has reviewed the application. Property owners directly affected by all of these closures have been notified and invited to this evening's public hearing. And we have received, as Vice Mayor stated, we did receive um, one letter via fax from a community member that is on, uh, has been green sheeted for your consideration. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Are there questions uh, here at the Council? No questions, comments? Public comments. Questions or comments from the public? Okay, bringing it back to the council, uh, just keep in mind we're going to be addressing first, in each case, the resolution pertaining to CEQA, and secondarily then the resolution per uh, item uh, pertaining to the actual applications themselves. So, um, what is the will of the council with respect to the resolution pertaining to the Saturday event? There's two we have to take separate though, right? Yeah. We, we do have to take them separately. And the first one is for CEQA. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second. Okay, the CEQA resolution has been uh, advanced uh, by Council Member Bublack, uh, seconded by Council Member Esker. Please read that resolution for us and uh, take the roll. Determining the closure of Oak Street between Cooper Avenue and Lyons Avenue, Lyons Avenue between Oak Street and North Rose Street, and North Rose Street between Lyons Avenue and Cooper Avenue for Sacred Heart Catholic Church to host the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima celebration procession is exempt from the provisions of the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, in accordance with Section 15304, minor alterations to land of the CEQA guidelines. Council Member Esquerre? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublock? Yes. Council yes. Mayor Soyset? Yes. <laughs> wow, that was efficient. That was great. Okay, now come... Uh, yes, this is the resolution Second. pertaining to the actual application itself. Uh, it has been moved by Councilmember Bublack, seconded by Councilmember Esker. Uh, could you read the uh, resolution pertaining to that uh, permit and call the roll? Approving the special event permit application for the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima celebration procession hosted by Sacred Heart Catholic Church, authorizing the associated closure of Oak Street, Street between Cooper Avenue and Lyons Avenue, Lyons Avenue between Oak Street and North Rose Street, and North Rose Street. Street between Lyons Avenue and Cooper Avenue for pedestrian safety on Saturday, September 30th, 2017 from 7 p.m. through 10 p.m. and authorizing the city manager to apply appropriate conditions and restrictions on the street closure. Sorry. Council Member Esquerre? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublock? Yes. Mayor Soyseth? Yes. Uh, also now under item B. Perfect. Second. Moved by Council Member Bublack, seconded by Council Member Esquerre pertaining to the CEQA, res uh, the CEQA guideline. Determining the closure of Lyons Avenue between North Rose Street and Colorado Avenue, Colorado Avenue between Lyons Avenue and Cooper Avenue, and Cooper Avenue between Colorado Avenue and Oak Street for Sacred Heart Catholic Church to host the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima celebration procession is exempt from the provisions of the California Environmental Quality Act CEQA in accordance with Section 15304, minor alterations to land of the CEQA guidelines. Council Member Esquerre? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublack? Yes. Mayor Soyseth? Yes. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Please read the resolution pertaining to the application. Approving the special event permit application for the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima celebration procession is hosted by Sacred Heart Catholic Church, authorizing the associated closure of Lyons Avenue between North Rose Street and Colorado Avenue, 
Colorado Avenue between Lyons Avenue and Cooper Avenue, and Cooper Avenue between Colorado Avenue and Oak Street for pedestrian safety on Sunday, October 1st, 2017 from 9.30 a.m. through 12 o'clock p.m. and authorizing the city manager to apply appropriate conditions and restrictions on the street closure. Council Member Esquer? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublak? Yes. Mayor Soyseth? Yes. And that resolution carries as well. Now, item C, pertaining to the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe procession, uh, initial re uh, resolution pertaining to CEQA, what is the will? Moved to advance. Second. It's been moved by Council Member Esquer, uh, seconded by Council Member Bublak, pertaining to the CEQA uh, resolution. Determining the closures, closure of North Rose Street between Cooper Avenue and Cahill Avenue, Cahill Avenue between North Rose Street and Bell Street, Bell Street between Cahill Avenue and Lyons Avenue, and Lyons Avenue between Bell Street and Oak Street for the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe procession celebration hosted by Sacred Heart Catholic Church is exempt from the provisions of the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, in accordance with Section 15304, Minor Alterations to Land of the CEQA Guidelines. Council Member Esquer? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublak? Yes. Mayor Soy Seth? Yes. Uh, that resolution passes now pertaining to the actual Move application. Advance. Moved by Council Member Esquer, seconded by Council Member Bublak. Clerk, could you please read the resolution uh, regarding the application, uh, permit application, and call the roll? Approving the special event permit application for the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe procession celebration hosted by Sacred Heart Catholic Church, authorizing the associated closure of North Rose Street between Cooper Avenue and Cahill Avenue, Cahill Avenue between North Rose Street and Bell Street, Bell Street between Cahill Avenue and Lyons Avenue, and Lyons Avenue between Bell Street and Oak Street for pedestrian safety on Tuesday, December 12, 2017, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. and authorizing the city manager to apply appropriate conditions and restrictions on the street closure. Council Member Esquer? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublak? Yes. Mayor Soyseth? Yes. And the resolution regarding that permit uh, passes as well. Thank you very much, Council. Thank you very Thank much, you very much Council. Council. You bet. You bet. Now before us, item F, request to reject all bids submitted for RFP number 16-378, Tourism Strategy, and approve Amendment 1 to an agreement with North Star Destination Strategies of Nashville, Tennessee, to include the additional scope of work for the Tourism Strategy. Good evening, Ms. Pitt. Good evening, Vice Mayor and members of Council. Um, as you might remember that uh, last fall the city issued, or uh, late last summer the city issued um, three RFPs, uh, one for the update to the Economic Development Strategic Plan, a second one for marketing and branding, and a third one for the development of a tourism strategy. Um, the uh, work was awarded to um, ADE on the Economic Development Strategic Plan, and then uh, the work was awarded for marketing and branding for North Star Destination Strategies. Um, in reviewing the um, submissions for the tourism, the outside and inside uh, review panel um, felt it provided the greatest consistency to have North Star Destination Strategies complete um, the tourism portion of the scope of work associated with third RFP 16-378. Uh, um, there is also somewhat of a cost savings in not having to replicate um, the data collection and research um, associated with that. So the item before you is the rejection of the submissions of bids um, and awarding an amended scope of work to North Star Destination Strategies for the tourism portion um, of the scope. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there questions here? Yes, uh, Marin, I did have a quick question. Sure. I did I do, did notice on the bids there was uh, two bids that were lower than 55000 So do you? So professional services agreements are not subject to lowest bidder. Um, you can select um, based on a whole variety of things. And in fact, uh, when you review proposals, um, the submission of the dollar amount associated with that agreement is in a separate envelope that you're not to consider that as part of the review of the scope and their response. And then just a question and clarification, did, uh, did uh, North Star actually bid on the tourism piece? Yes. 
Okay, so it's not just something that they're picking up out of their goodness. No, they actually included the tourism um, in, in their marketing and branding component um, as all one proposal. Okay. Any comments from the public questions at this point? Okay, bringing it back to council. Both motions have been advanced by Council Member Bublack, uh, seconded by Council Member uh, Esquer. I'll go ahead and read those motions if you would, Clerk, and call the roll. Rejecting all bids submitted for request for proposal RFP number 16378, Tourism Strategy. Council Member Esquer? Yes. Council Member DeHart? Yes. Council Member Bublack? Yes. Mayor Soyseth? Yes. And uh, both of those motions carry. Thank you very much, Council. Um, and thank you as well, Ms. Pitt, for your attention to those matters. I know that uh, that's been a long time coming to get those things uh, left and uh, actually in work. And now before us, any matters now too late for the agenda or non-agenda items? None? Okay. Council items for future consideration? Yes. I did have a question. Um, I'm not sure if it's uh, probably addressed to Allison, but I just want to, is there an um, update or status on the uh, National Guard Armory? Do, do we know when we'll be talking about that or what proposals? In regards to the status of the armory, we are still waiting um, for the uh, California Military Department to vacate the premises. Um, the last I checked with them, they were um, at the mercy of their, their federal budget and uh, trying to make uh, decisions based on funding available. And so um, it's going to be a, a little bit of a wait and see. And if you recall, once we do get a date that they will be vacating, they still have to uh, address the lead dust that, that was there from the former indoor shooting range. And so um, I would hesitate to give you an estimate on the time frame. We're really at their um, their mercy in terms of when they are ready to vacate the facility. So I will continue to provide you with periodic updates if that's what you would like. Yes, so I just follow up. Um, so the lead cleanup will not take place until after they vacate? That's correct. They have to be out of the building in order to, for that process to take place. Perhaps we can just have City Manager uh, uh, in our tickler file. Perhaps uh, once that happens, we'll get to just it'll be before us so that yes. we get that current update. Thank you very much. Uh, good point. Thanks, Gil. Uh, any other comments or future? I'm sorry, future consideration. No council comments. Uh, seeing none. Um, closed session this evening. Uh, we're going to be here. I probably better put these on again so I can see. Um, we're going to be uh, dealing with 12A this evening only, and that is described in the agenda. Uh, 12B and C have been removed from our agenda this evening, and they will be addressed at a later time. Um, that being the case, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. It's been advanced by Councilmember Esker, seconded by the mayor. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Good evening, folks. Uh, thank you for being here with us. It's good to see you, uh, uh, former Mayor Bates. Uh, I like your new do, sir. It's good to see you. Take care. So, going that way or that way? I'm not sure. Uh,